Long ago, the mummified undead were mere mortals just like you and I, protected by their desert gods who ruled the underworld. For generations they prospered, as the link between their world and the underworld remained strong. When the Havoc Gods came to power during the Great War, that link was irreparably damaged, and as a result, their people could no longer pass to the afterlife. Cursed to live a false life, crops wilted, their bodies decayed, and eventually, some began to lose their way. Some even saw their undeath as a gift. Even after the Havoc Gods were defeated, civil war ravaged the lands. Until one day, when a powerful sorceress came from the north, claiming she could reforge the link to the underworld and free them from their curse. Most were eager to finally pass on, but some did not want the link to be repaired. Instead, they plotted and schemed to ally with the Havoc Gods and claim the desert kingdoms for themselves. Lord Zarakai was one of those schemers. One foul evening, secluded in nearby hills, he used his dark magic to open up a demonic fissure. Sensing the disturbance, Priestess Carol Keta came to investigate. What is the meaning of this? Dark magic? Ah, Priestess Carol Keta. You are just in time. Lord Zarakai, I should have known you'd be behind in this treachery. If you do not embrace our gift, Priestess, then I have no other choice. It is not a gift. It is a curse. We must not let the Havoc Gods back into our lands. The two Queen will repair the link to the Underworld, and we can finally pass on, don't you see? And why would I want that? We're practically gods ourselves now. Hear that chattering? The ritual is complete. I beseech to you, oh gods of heaven, send me your own weapon to conquer this land. Today we're going to be playing some Age of Fantasy by One Page Rules. If you aren't aware, the rules for this game are almost completely identical to Grimdark Future. So if you're familiar with that game, you already know how to play this game. In this game, we're playing the Volcanic Activity mission from the Dark Crusade mission pack. In Volcanic Activity, the players roll off and then alternate placing six volcano markers anywhere on the table over 12 inches away from each other and the table's edge. There's a Toxic Fumes rule. Units with the flying rule must take a dangerous terrain test when flying over enemies and obstacles. We weren't quite sure what they meant by obstacles, so we pretty much just ignored this rule. And then at the beginning of each round, you roll one dice and follow the instructions for the corresponding event. We'll get to that later on. For the objectives, each player gets one victory point for destroying at least half of the units in the enemy army, one victory point for each enemy hero they killed, one victory point if they destroyed the most expensive unit, and one victory point if they destroyed the least expensive unit. The most expensive demon unit is a champion of war with the blessing of war. He's joined to a combined unit of blood warriors with dual hand weapons. They have a banner of war, sergeant, musician, and battle standard. That's a total of 410 points. Their least expensive unit is a squad of War Furies, coming in at 100 points. Brooks is also playing two additional squads of Blood Warriors with dual hand weapons, and a squad of Beast Riders. These lists were made before competitive rules were added, by the way. The Mummified Undead actually have a three-way tie for the most expensive unit because I brought three giant scorpions. They come in at 130 points each. There's a tie for the least expensive unit as well between a royal champion with a priest upgrade and a scarab swarm. They both come in at 70 points. The mummies also have a squad of skeleton warriors with hand weapons, a squad of skeleton warriors with halberds, a squad of skeleton horsemen with bows, a squad of hunting beasts, and one death casket. Okay, so I'm going to be setting up on this side, and you're going to be setting up in that corner over there. I get to place first, so just to recap, I placed my first marker here, and then Brooks placed one over here, then I placed another one over here, you placed this one, and I placed this one, and Brooks placed one all the way back here. We did our best setting up uh, lines here that were about two feet apart. Just because of the way we film, uh, not being able to reach the uh, back end here is easy, and uh, 
yeah, just because like half of this section isn't really usable. Um, we just kind of did the best we could trying to set this up in a fair way. Okay, so we're rolling off to see who deploys first. So it looks like I deploy first. Since you're scouting everything, yeah, I would deploy everything that isn't scouting first. Yep. I'm gonna set my priestess over here. The death casket is gonna go right here behind her. Yeah, they're gonna go right there. All right, so rolling off to see who deploys their scouting guys first. All right, looks like it's uh, just my bowmen. I think I'm actually gonna just deploy them here and then just not even scout. Yeah, they're kind of meant for support. So it would be good if they're facing the right direction too. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start with the beast riders. They're gonna go here and then they immediately move 12 inches for scout. I guess they can just scout over the... Yeah, for scout you ignore terrain. And then we'll do the next five, starting right there. And then the last squad. And then the evil Lord Zarakai is just gonna stand in the back here and just watch the battle. Uh, rolling for the volcano markers. That's four. Our first round of volcanic activity was pretty brutal. We rolled cracked earth. Okay, two and three. For that, you draw a line between two random tokens, and any unit within three inches of that line has to take a dangerous terrain test. Yeah, it looks like this unit and this unit. All right. Okay. So it looks like I lose three guys in there. So again. On a one, somebody the died. war demons took the brunt of the damage on that one, losing a whopping four warriors. My death casket is going to fire into the squad of blood warriors over here. Two attacks, each one's blast three with rending, hitting on threes. So neither of those get through. That makes up for the dangerous train test. Yes, yes. So big surprise here. These guys are going to charge into that skeleton unit. So they have impact three. Okay, so they need fives to um, survive this impact. It's nine hits. Oh man, so that's two. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, die. Yep, so I'm gonna attack. They have three hand weapons. The quality four, so I need fours. So it's gonna be two hits at AP two. Okay, that puts them at a six. Okay. Oh, I got one. Hey, and then they each have Claw attack as well, which is two attacks apiece. So six attacks again at quality four, and they all miss. <laughs> all right, they're gonna survive. Yeah. They just have one attack apiece, so hit on fives. One goes through, no AP. All right, so I have a defense of three up. They're good. Now I have to take a morale test. Mummified undead have the undead rule, which means they automatically pass morale tests. Instead, you have to roll a dice for each remaining model or toughness in the unit. And for each result of a one or a two, they take one wound. Or three plus, pretty much. Okay, so I'm good. All right. So they live, and then you guys move back one inch. Yep. I am going to activate the Royal Champion, which is my priestess. Uh, she has wizard one, so she can cast one spell. And she's going to cast um, Desiccation, which is a target enemy unit within six inches, takes one hit with AP four, deadly three. So I need to get a uh, four up with her. Got it. I need a six. Up, up. That's not a six. One guy. Just That's one guy down. Just dead. So these guys are just going to rush forward. My skeletal horseman bowmen are going to move just a little bit over this direction. And they're going to shoot. They have a 24 inch range. They're also going to shoot the beast riders over there. Just five attacks, hitting on fives. They do have a cursed ammo, but that doesn't come into play here because there's no modifiers. So, five up. So that's one, uh, no AP. With no AP, that puts me at a defense of three. So they're good. You got it. Yep. So we realized that um, Brooks forgot to use his Furious, which I think all these guys have Furious. Yeah, the entire army has Furious which gives me an additional one attack on a melee weapon of my choice. So we'll do it on their hand weapons. I need a four. So that's two more hits at AP two. You would have had three guys. So two more hits at AP two. AP two, okay, yeah. so that would have been a six up. Okay, so yeah, that would have killed the unit. All right, and since they would have won that combat, they could move three inches, but I'm just gonna leave them there for now. All right. 
My hunting beasts are going to charge your blood warriors here. It's uh, 12 inches. Uh, I should be able to get most of them in there. And then I get two attacks a piece. Quality four. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five hits, no AP. No AP puts me at a defense of four. So I'm gonna lose three guys. That's not great. So we've got two attacks, hitting on fours. They both miss. So I need a four up. And that's not a four up, so he just routes. Yep. All right, I'm just gonna move him up three inches then, since they won combat. So they're actually just going to move up six inches. They've took casualties, so they're cautious now. All right, my skeletons are just going to... I'm just gonna move these guys up here. All right. We're just trying to get into combat here. The demons poured out of the fissure, but were met with equal force. As demons descended from the sky, Karoketa gestured towards the sands, as if unveiling the mighty pincers clawing their way up through the earth. Great Scorpi, aid us in this battle. So we both have ambush models. We gotta roll up to see who starts deploying first. Looks like you get to deploy first. All okay. right. Oh. I'm just gonna deploy my War Furies right at nine inches back here. Giant Scorpion one of three. Giant Scorpion two is gonna go here. Giant Scorpion three here. I think my Scarab Swarms are just gonna go right here. For the second volcanic activity, we got Magma Flow, which affects units within six inches of D3 random volcanoes. We got a one for the D3 and then rolled a two for the token number. Which means it's uh, this unit, this unit, this one, and this one. So I'm gonna roll for that now. Best case scenario for me. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the undead ended up losing two skeleton warriors and their scarab swarms took two damage. Not too painful. They're really mad that one of the guys died last time, so they're gonna go ahead and just charge here. No. So that's gonna be an impact six. Not the priestess. So I need a uh, four. four up. One, two, three, four. So she does have one health left. All right. Yep, so I'm gonna swing with their hand weapons first because they have more AP than the claws. So they're gonna get four attacks, one naturally and plus one for charging. So that's gonna be Three hits at AP four. Oh. I'm sorry, AP two. Okay, yeah. that still puts me at a six up. Sixes. So the front lines are a place for a priestess. I must retreat. All right, so they're just gonna slide on backwards. All right, my uh, hunting beasts are gonna charge into your your squad here. Two attacks apiece, hitting on fours. So one, two, three, four, five. No AP, yeah. I need four ups. So I'm gonna lose three guys. Oh yeah. So, I think everybody but this guy yeah. would, would get to hit back. Alright. Alright, so it's gonna be five guys hitting on threes, I believe. So three hits at AP two. So that's three dead. So the champion's gonna attack with his flame spear. It's gonna be two at AP four. That's a six up again. Oh, you got him. Alright. They did their job. They serve their purpose. I'm gonna have the Blood Warriors charge into your casket of souls. No, not the souls. So yeah, four guys attacking, they get three attacks apiece, they need fours. So that's a terrible roll. I only got two. Oh wow, <laughs> that is a good roll. Okay, so it's a uh, five up for the casket, and with AP2 that puts it at a six up. So I take two damage, so I have one more health left on him. Three attacks at a quality three. So, three. Got all of them. And then I have a defense of four up. So I made one, so I lose two. We'd be tied then. Yep, we'd tie for combat. All right, so no morale test. Yep. My uh, giant scorpion here is gonna charge in. I'm gonna attack your blood warriors. Okay, so the great scorpion, which is what it is, mm -hmm. has a pincer attack, three attacks. He needs a four up, so he gets one. And that's uh, 2 AP, so that so should... 2 AP puts me at 6 up. And then a stinger attack, 2 attacks with poison. Okay, so they both go through, but this one's poison. So that turns into 3 attacks. 4 hits total, any AP on it? There is no AP on that. Alright, so just 4 ups. I'm gonna lose one guy. Okay, I'll take it. Alright, we're gonna start with the champion. So I need 6s now, because they've already fought once. Um, so yeah, we did look at 
look into it, and you do not get any modifiers after your fatigue. The plus one for the uh, leader was what we were not sure about. Yep. So there's uh, he's just on a straight six. He does hit one. Oh, of course. So it's AP four, <laughs> and it's deadly three. Okay. Yep. So I need a six. That's three damage. All right, and then I'm gonna get six more attacks from the regular guys. I need sixes. That's two sixes. Two more. Oh my god. That's AP two. Okay, that puts him at a five up. Yep. He gets one. Hey. All right, but I still managed to do four damage to your one damage. Yeah. So you actually lose combat by quite a lot. I do, but he has the undead roll. Two dice for his remaining wounds. It's a one or a two, so that does kill him. So I think what we're gonna do, so yeah, they're gonna charge the scarabs here. Now, since they charged, they do get 10 attacks. 10 attacks at quality five. Well, that made up for that one. So that's gonna be, was that two, four, six? Five sixes. That's one. So I lose two guys. Yep. He's got three attacks. He needs a six. six. Yep. He gets one, but that's poison, so, so it turns into it. three. Yep. And then I have a defense of five. So I failed. So he kills three guys. Holy sh! <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> uh, but you do so, lose combat. Yeah. So you have two wins left. Yep. Okay, so I'm good. All right, so you just move your guys back here. I'm gonna charge in with this giant scorpion. I'm gonna kill it on and sixes here, again. Um, Blood warriors. Three attacks with the pincer. Need fours. I got one of those. That's an AP two. All right. That puts me at a six. Oh, Ooh. that's not a six. So we'll lose the musician here. And then two stingers. Fours. A one hit. Four. They're good. And then I'm gonna swing back. Nope. The two other blood warriors are gonna attack on sixes. Nobody hits. Okay, with Brooks's battle standard, he um, counts as dealing one damage, so we tied. Okay. These guys are just gonna run away. They're gonna strategically back up to about there. Running away, are you? My last giant scorpion is going to charge. He's going to loop around here and <laughs> charge from this side into this unit, and then he's got three attacks, hitting on fours, minus two AP. Okay, uh, sixes, so both of them are dead. And he is going to consolidate three inches that way. The scarab swarm, that's gonna rush that direction. The uh, horsemen are going to move up six inches, right on top of that volcanic vent. <laughs> And they are going to fire one attack a piece, hitting on fives. Alright. It's a lot better. No AP. Yeah. So then I have a quality four. Uh, I'm gonna lose one one guy. We'll take the banner out. Okay, so they would have yeah. to take a morale test. Yep, so now they have to take a morale test. I don't think we forgot that. No, I'm pretty sure we're done there. So they're good. Alright. The casket, he's slow, so he's only gonna move up four inches and then fire everything into that unit. Alright. So two attacks, I need threes, one goes through, and that's a blast, so I guess it becomes two. Right, so just a four up. Four up, yep. So one goes through, that'll kill the unit champion. And you'd have to take a morale test again. Alright, so he's quality four. Oh, so he fails. So he is wavering. Alright, and then finally I'm going to charge your beast routers with my skeletons. It'd be uh, everybody but him. He should be able to attack too. Yeah. So I get seven attacks, hit on fives. So that's uh, four to go through. And then. No AP. Alright, so I'm defense three up. So one goes through. So I'm gonna take one damage. Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna attack with their claws first. I need sixes, so nothing. And then the hand weapons. And again, I need sixes, nothing. And uh, since you lost combat, you would take a morale test? Yep. Uh, quality four. They're good. The mummified hordes pushed back against the attacking demons, breaking their lines and battering their forces. Victory was in sight. Start around three. I'm rolling for the volcanic activity. Six. Six. We haven't Six. had that yet. For round three, we got sky high eruption. For this one, we took turns picking a volcano and rolling for it. Um, do you want to roll off to see who goes first? Or does it say? You can go first, that's fine. 
All right. On a four up, the player rolling places a marker within 12 inches of the volcano. Then the opponent has the option to roll and on a four up, they may move the marker up to six inches in any direction. Then units within three inches of that marker take a dangerous terrain test. Four, that so one's nothing good. happens. Nope, four up, didn't get it. And then I'll roll for that one yet. Yep. Number three. Uh, that's a so six. you get it, so okay. you can place a marker. Well, I'm obviously going to put as close as possible to this guy. Yeah, and then on a four up, I get to move it six inches, which I don't. So that would go off. And it's anyone within three, which is definitely him. Okay. And then he's gonna take a dangerous train test, so I need not a one. So he's got a whole lot of work for a whole lot of nothing. And yeah, the, it is. The one in the back corner, I mean, we can roll. It doesn't go off. This one ended up being kind of a dud, but it definitely does have potential to do a lot of damage. At least we got to try all of them. Yeah, we've yeah. gotten one of each. So I am going to take these guys and charge them over to here. All right. You don't want to charge them into these guys? No. All right, so that's impact six. Defense three. One goes through. Okay. I'm going to attack with their hand weapons now, and they're going to get the Furious form, so plus one attack. And that is only one hit. One hit of minus two, that puts me at a five. I got that. Okay, and then the claws, so... Two more hits at no AP. Threes? We got ones. Okay, so three attacks, fours, two of those go through, that's uh, two AP. Alright, that puts me at fives. They love it. And then his uh, stinger, one of those goes through. Three up. Oh, you're good. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> then I would have to roll four dice because he lost combat. Okay, so yeah, he's oh, good. good. Yeah, <laughs> now I'm rolling. My skeletal warriors are going to uh, charge your blood warriors. A lot of warriors fighting each other. Right? That's right. Eight attacks on fives. So that's one. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's real good. Three. No AP on that. All right, so four up. So I'm gonna lose two. That was yeah, that was lucky, honestly. Yeah, that was good. And then I get two attacks back. So I need fours. Oh, well, there you go. Four. Up. So he's dead. Leader's gonna go and just unwaver. I think. I guess I'll, I'll shoot him. Okay. With my um, skeletal archers, they're gonna move up first though. Yeah. Five attacks. Need fives. Oh wow. Jeez. <laughs> That's awesome. I need fours. Go. Uh, he's dead. Um, I guess I'll just charge these guys in one at a time here. All right. See how it goes. So they get three attacks, hitting on sixes. Nothing for them. All right. All right. So two hand weapon attacks. I need sixes. And then four claw attacks. I need sixes. One. one. And it's AP one. Just a six. Yeah. Didn't get it. All That's right. one damage. One damage. Okay. And so then... he just has to get a three up here. Okay, so he's good. Alright. He's gonna move back. I guess this guy I'll charge in too. Alright. He's hitting on sixes because he already yes. attacked. Yep. Oh. <laughs> That's three for the pincers and then two for the um the stinger. Uh, two hand weapon attacks, four claw attacks, nothing. No damage was done. No. Nope. He's just moving back. Three attacks again. Alright. Um, two go through, because he's okay. hitting on fours this time. Yep. But okay. two wins, so one guy's gonna die. Yeah. And I need... So that's three hits. And then I need three. So this guy's dead. And then I'll attack back. Nothing, and then the one hand weapon, nothing. So I need a four up. Nope. So he routes. Yep, that's game. Yeah, that's game. Good game, man. Good game, good game. This betrayal will not go unpunished. Guards, seize him. Fools, you have not seen the last of me. Hey, thanks for watching this battle report. I hope you enjoyed it. A big thanks to One Page Rules for creating some awesome miniatures and games and sponsoring channels like this one. If you want to see more games like this, subscribe and click the bell notification. Currently I upload these once a month 
Also, click on the links to OPR's website and Patreon in the description below and check them out. That tells OPR that it's worth it to sponsor this channel and allows me to put more time and effort into making these videos. You can also let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a good day and I will see you later.